Okay, um, just like us to turn to the book of Hebrews um, 2. And uh, we're just going to um, read that, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, share a quick thought, and then we'll get into um, our lesson. Just one second. King. Okay, here we go. Um, Sorry about that. Okay, so let's look at Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Okay, it says, Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. What does that mean, to give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard? What does that mean? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. It means to be, um, to give it more attention to be careful, right? To the to be diligent about the things that we have already heard. And obviously, here it's talking about um, the message of the gospel, right? But generally, applying it to the rest of the word, right? Whenever God says something, whatever we have learned, whatever we have understood, so the exhortation or the encouragement is that we need to give more earnest heed to the things we have heard already heard, received, right? And what is the reason for that? The second part of that verse, lest we drift away. Okay, Give the more earnest heed to things that you already heard, things that you already received. It says, lest we drift away. Okay, So there is this possibility of drifting away. What does drifting away mean? Drifting away. Uh, you can look into your own language bibles and see what is that word what does drift away means mean huh sorry removing out no um sorry. Any other? you can look in, look into your language Pastor, can i say something yeah gertrude is it backslide sorry Backslide. Backslide. No, generally, you know, what does it mean? I think uh, if we can increase the monitor volume just a little bit, yeah. Maybe at the speaker or just the monitor volume, right? Well, not exactly backslide, you know, in the actual meaning of drifting away, what does it mean? Moving away, shifting away. You know, you're in a boat. And the boat is maybe close to the shore, but it's not tied to anything. You know, with the waves, it will drift away, right? It will slowly just move away. And uh, this drifting happens over a period of time. It's not immediate, right? A boat which is near the shore, tied to the shore, will not be in the middle of the ocean just like that. It happens over a period of time. As the waves come, as the waves, waves take it, it just goes, it just moves, keeps moving, keeps moving, and, and suddenly we realize, hey, the boat is not near the shore. It was supposed to be here. It's not here. Where is it? It's gone into the sea, and we can't even see it. It's so far away, right? It's like a tiny dot, but it's moved so far away. How did it move? Did it happen immediately? No. It happened over a period of time. Right, So uh, scripture warns, encourages us, saying, we must give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard. Okay, Whatever we have learned. Uh, you know, and uh, as Bible college students, what are the things that we have learned since the day we came? You know, about identity, about the Holy Spirit, various things that we have learned. What is it that we have learned? What is it that is that we have put in our hearts? Right? 
if we if you're not careful if we don't give that earnest heed to it then chances are that we will drift away from that teaching from that truth right so uh, saying you give the more earnest heed okay so that's uh, something for us to think about that's something for us to pray through as well saying that we we need to be anchored we need to be careful um, that the that we do not lose those things that as we have received already, right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that for this word, thank you for this exhortation, Lord. Um, enable us to, Lord, think about, meditate on, Lord, study, learn those things that you have taught us, Holy Spirit. You are our teacher, and um, your word declares that you teach and you remind us of the things, of the words of Jesus. And so, Lord, we pray that even as we, Lord, open our, open our hearts to you this morning, I pray, God, that, uh, Lord, that even those things which seem to be, oh, God, that we seem to be drifting away from, Lord, we pray that you'll bring it back. Lord, we pray, let there be a rebuilding, let there be a restoring of things, God, that, um, that seem to be breaking off. And I just pray that, uh, may there be much strength in us, Lord, spiritually. May there be much strength in the inner man. And to that end, Lord, we commit ourselves to you and to the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit this morning. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last class we stopped. Uh, we were looking at baptism, the Holy Spirit, and uh, we were kind of looking at all the... You know all the questions that people might have about the gift of tongues right so we were looking at some of those questions and we were following that uh, book the pdf online students you can follow it um uh, we were looking at the uh, we were looking at some of the contents from the the book baptism in the holy spirit okay so um let's just continue we looked at how um you know, uh, do I do we have to wait to receive baptism? Do we have to have hands laid on us to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Uh, do we have to be baptized in water uh, in order to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? We looked at all that, right? We settled all those um, all those questions. Okay, so the next question is: Does tongues? Okay, somebody's praying in tongues. Does it always have to be understood? Okay, what does the Bible say? It does praying in tongues, you know, does it always have to be understood? Well, the answer is no, right? Because there are different kinds of tongues we see in the Bible. There are different kinds of tongues. The tongues doesn't always have to be understood. And uh, a very clear example of that is what we see in 1 Corinthians 14, where Paul himself says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit man prays, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful, right? So, um, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 14. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So what is he saying? He's saying, I'm praying in tongues. My spirit man is praying, that perfect prayer as led by the Holy Spirit, but my understanding is unfruitful, meaning I don't understand the words that I am praying. So it's perfectly okay for us to pray in tongues and not really understand what we are praying. Okay, and now we know that there are different kinds of tongues. Okay, that are mentioned there. So we'll just look at a few of them. Okay, uh, we know that there are tongues of men and tongues of angels. Okay, what does that mean? We look at one Corinthians thirteen, one Corinthians thirteen verse one. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. It has become, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So the first part, what is he, what is he saying? Though I speak with the tongues of men. Okay. If you remember Acts chapter 2, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was experienced by the 120 disciples, they started speaking in tongues. Right. The Bible says that they spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit gave them the words. They, the disciples, spoke them out. Okay. Now, the people who had gathered there were from the surrounding regions. Right? It talks about um, you know, some groups of people. It talks about Medes. It talks about Parthians, Elamites, 
uh, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, all these, from all these regions, people had come. And they, uh, it says in verse 11, Acts chapter 2, verse 11, Cretans and Arabs, right? And they said, we hear them, we hear these disciples praising God in our own languages, right? So it could be tongues of men, meaning human language, earthly language, right? Or it could be tongues of angels, or it could be a heavenly language, which is not found anywhere on the earth. You search, you search, you search, you may not find that language on the earth. Why? It is a heavenly language, right? So it could be an earthly language, it could be a heavenly language. So you saying that, hey, I need to understand, is, is really not scriptural, right? It, you may not understand it. It could be earthly language, it could be a heavenly language. So there are different kinds of tongues. Okay, then you also, you also see that it could be the gift of tongues for personal edification. Okay, that is what we, you know, we're going to learn more as we look at each of these gifts. You now, if you look at 1 Corinthians 14, and if, uh, if you see verse, verse 4, okay, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. Okay, you're all looking at that, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4, right? Okay, by the way, do you all have this book? Last class you had it. Okay. You all have your own copy, right? Uh, on um, in-person class. Okay. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. It says, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Okay. What is edification? Something that's happening on the inside. Your spirit man is being built up. You're being made strong, right? So if I pray in, in tongues then I am being made strong, I'm edifying myself, I'm building myself up. Okay, so that's very clear. He who speaks. So there could be tongues for personal edification. You are personally being built up, edified. Okay, then we also see there is tongues for interpretation. Okay, And that is in verse 5. He says, I wish you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you prophesied. Uh, and then it says, for he who prophesies is greater is, than he speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So he's talking about, uh, uh, you know, the gift of interpretation of tongues. Okay. Verse, uh, you know, if you look at 1 Corinthians 12, and if you look at verse 9, okay, it talks about, or uh, verse 10 says, there is the gift of interpretation of tongues. Okay. So, so which means that this gift operates to interpret the tongue. So tongues is prayed, tongues is, you know, maybe a message in tongues is given, and there is also the interpretation of tongues, either by the same person or by someone else. Okay, then tongues, is, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 22 talks about tongues being a sign to the unbeliever. 1 Corinthians 14, 22 talks about that. Acts chapter 2 also the same thing happened. Where people spoke in tongues or prayed in tongues, declared in tongues the goodness of God and it was a sign, it was something that drew the unbeliever to God. They saw it and said, this is supernatural, how can this be? They asked this question and they were in a position to hear what Peter had to say. And at the end of what Peter said, what Peter shared, that first message, they said, what must we do? They asked, you know, what should we do? Tell us. Then Peter said, you know, repent and be baptized and so on, right? So we see that tongues as a sign to the unbeliever. So the answer to that question, does tongues always have to be understood? Not necessarily. Okay, so that's the thing. So we need to be clear, you know, because sometimes we hold back from praying in tongues because we don't understand. I don't want to pray because I don't understand the words. What if I'm saying something wrong? We hold back, right? So uh, we don't have to do that. It is biblical, it is scriptural that tongues need not always be understood, okay? The other thing that we understand from the scriptures about the gift of tongues, especially Acts chapter 2 and the beginning, uh, is that the Holy Spirit gives the words, but it is me 
or I who needs to speak out. Okay, the Holy Spirit gives the words. The Holy Spirit will not force you to speak. The Holy Spirit, Spirit will not make you speak, but it is you who speaks. So it is, sometimes it's things, you know, we, we have that question. It is me speaking or is it the Holy Spirit? Right? We have that question. No, we're, we're confused. No, it is actually, me. I'm only speaking. So am I making up these words? I'm speaking. Isn't it supposed to be something supernatural? Well, it is supernatural because the Bible says that even on, on that day, Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, which means they were filled, they began to speak, and it says, the last part of the verse, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Holy Spirit gave them the words, they spoke it out. So it's a supernatural work, but it involves the natural as well. Right? So it's a very, you know, it's a very simple work, uh, uh, if you look at it, it's very simply supernatural, right? Now, uh, it might you might think that okay, you might have a wrong understanding. Okay, it needs to be you know the Holy Spirit will come and force and do it. No, you re receive the words, but you speak it out. Okay. Then another question, uh, another thing that will help us is that the language or the words are these are sounds. Okay. When I say word, I'm making a sound. If I say in Hindi, Shabd, I'm making a sound. Okay, Shabd is a sound, word is a sound. You're able to hear it and you're, you know the meaning of it. right? Therefore, you understand, okay, this is what it means. A language is made of sounds. So, the tongues, the gift of tongues, these are made of these syllables, which are sounds. So, sounds that need to be uttered. You look at it that way, right? Because many times we think, I need to understand the word, I need to know what the word is, and then I will be able to speak it out. These are series of sounds that need to be spoken, that can be sung, even. right? So that is it. That, that would simplify it right? for us. We can understand it better. OK. Then the other thing, other thing is that um, we can only speak one language at a time. Okay, either I can speak in English right now, or I can stop and speak in another language. Right? I cannot speak two languages. I can speak a mix of maybe two languages. Like in English, I can mix up certain words and speak. But really, I can only speak one language at a time. I cannot speak two different languages at the same time. So if I have that expectation, I want to be able to pray in tongues, you know, maybe first of all, Maybe some of us who do not have yet started praying in tongues, maybe we have the desire to pray in tongues, but then we, we always pray in the known language. Right? For example, normally what people do is, you know, they just go on and saying, you know, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Well, that is good. We thank the Lord, you know, we praise Him. But at some point, you begin to speak the words the Holy Spirit is giving in your spirit, right? Which means that you stop saying the words in the known language okay very simple okay right so these are some things practical things that we need to understand okay so um god understands the mind of the spirit he knows everything he knows all the languages so don't worry he knows what he's giving um and you don't have to have a fear you know sometimes we have this fear uh, what if i you know, I've prayed, I've asked for the Holy Spirit, but what if it is some evil spirit? Right? I know one person uh, when we were young in a, in, a, in a youth group, right? So this person said, you know, I, I stopped praying in tongues. Why? Then the person said, no, I, I thought, you know, what if it is these are words given by the evil spirit? Okay. The Lord is very clear. The Lord says that, you know, if... If you ask, you know, if an earthly father asks, or if the earthly son asks the father for bread, what would the earthly father give? He will not give a stone. If the son asks for, you know, a fish, will the earthly father give a scorpion or, you know, serpent or something which is not really, you know, beneficial, something which is dangerous? No. So the Lord Jesus says, you know, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the Heavenly Father, right? 
So he's saying that, hey, this is the Heavenly Father. You, who are you asking? You're asking the Heavenly Father. Right? And who's giving the gift of the Holy Spirit? It's from the Father. Right? So will he do you anything wrong? No. Right? So trust the Lord. Trust whom you are asking and be filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to pray in faith. Okay? So we, it, it means that we need to step out in faith. Okay? Step out in faith and, uh, and speak in faith. So which means we need to reject all these kinds of fears, all these unnecessary things and begin to pray it out. Okay. Then one more thing that people might have is, you know, did Jesus speak in tongues? Okay. If Jesus spoke in tongues, then I'll speak. But Jesus did not speak in tongues. Why should I? Right? The thing is, the, the answer is we don't know. We don't know whether the Lord Jesus spoke in tongues. The Bible is not very clear. The right? Bible does not say. But it, it also talks about how when he was praying in the garden, he spoke out. It, it was with vehement cries and tears that he made intercession before the father right he would go by himself and to the mountain he would spend whole nights in prayer so like we don't know the bible does not mention okay so that's the thing but there's enough and more evidence in the scriptures that this is for all believers right the far the lord jesus himself said this is for all you believers and we see in scripture enough and more evidence as we you know, went through the book of Acts, we saw every time there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit, the first thing that we see or the supernatural thing that we see is the gift of tongues. Okay, so we can be assured, right? We can be rest assured that it is for all believers. You know, you don't have to think, okay, maybe it's for somebody, somebody more mature, somebody more learned, somebody more holy. Now, all these are futile, unnecessary arguments, right? These are not scriptural reasonings right okay any questions before we move into the gifts of the spirit any questions here online class anything about the baptism and the holy spirit no questions Okay. Fine. Okay, if that's the case, I mean, you can always, uh, you know, ask. You can always go back. Um, right. So um, I just want to look at um, the gifts of the spirit. Okay, and uh, we will. I'm just trying to share this text. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is from the the book "Gifts of the Holy Spirit." Okay, um, in person class, do you have the book "Gifts of the Holy Spirit"? This one. Okay, can someone go and just uh, take it, uh, like, and uh, just give it to everyone, please? Okay, so it is uh, this cover "Gifts of the Holy Spirit." So please keep this with you, one book, and um, and don't you know keep putting it back and taking etc. Especially if you're making a you know writing your name on it, right? Keep it with you. Okay, online students, you um, you have it in the classwork section, right? And you so you can um, download that, use it, you can access it whenever. So so this is about the Baptist, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so. Okay. You have enough books? Yeah? Yes. Okay, maybe, uh, yeah, if you don't have enough, you can use one per table for now. And then later you can, you can take the gifts, I mean, take the books. Yeah, we can use one per table right now. Later you can take. Okay. Or you can go to the classwork section if you're logged into you know, Google Classroom. And then the, under resources, these books are 
uploaded. The PDFs are uploaded. You can download them and use it, use them, right? Okay, let's look at um, chapter one. So we are right. So we are we are looking at this whole thing of the gifts of the spirit. Okay, we're getting an understanding of the gifts of the spirit, and it's good for good for us to know what are these gifts, why are these gifts given, how do these gifts operate. And is, again, you know, is it for some people? Is it for all? Is it for, you know, some gifts, gifts for some people? You know, all those things are there. So uh, for us to get an understanding. And why are we studying this? Because these are gifts from the Holy Spirit, right? The gifts of the Holy Spirit, which means that they come from Him. Holy Spirit is the one who is the source, or He's the one who is the owner of these gifts. Okay, so we need to understand um, in that perspective, since we are studying about the Holy Spirit, the person and power of the Holy Spirit, we are also studying about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we see that the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's actually a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, if you look at these gifts, these are not natural abilities. What's a natural ability? What's a natural ability? You know, you might have a natural ability to maybe run fast, right? You might have a natural ability to lift heavy weights. You might have a natural ability to sing. You might have a natural ability for natural talent or natural gifting to maybe to paint, maybe to, you know, do those things, right? Mu being a musician and so on. So these are natural abilities, which means that you learn them, right? You develop them. And these are some things that you're gifted with. It's a natural physical ability or natural talent that you have, right? But we are not referring to those. When we look at these gifts, we are seeing that these are supernatural, which means that they are not natural in origin, they are not natural in operation, but these are supernatural, right? So does anyone understand the word supernatural, right? So it is, it is not of man. Right? It is not of natural means. It's not of man, but it is of the spirit. It is of God. It doesn't, you know, confine to any natural laws. So therefore, we call it supernatural. You know, above, over and above the natural. Okay. So when we look at uh, the gifts, we see that they are a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit through the believer. Okay. So the believer is very much part and parcel of the manifestation of these gifts. Okay, so it's a work of the Holy Spirit through the believer. And uh, the Bible also talks about the fact that they are manifestations of the Spirit. Okay, um, just like us to open up to 1 Corinthians 12. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant okay what does ignorance mean lack of knowledge lack of learning lack of understanding so paul is saying you know i do not want you to be ignorant okay let it not be something that is not learned not understood it's somewhere there in the bible right um, god's desire is really for every believer to know it right what is the oppo opposite of ignorance to be to come to a place of learning, to come to a place of understanding, right? So Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant about the spiritual gifts. Okay, so that's the first thing that we see. Okay, next, um, verse 7. Okay, so while talking about these gifts, verse 7, the same chapter, chapter 12, the manifestation of the Spirit. He's talking about the gifts. He's calling them the manifestation of the spirit. What is manifestation? It's a display, right? It is a tangible, visible display of the Holy Spirit. So if you look at the gifts of the spirit, these are manifestations of the spirit or display of the Holy Spirit, right? So, so that is something that we see. So it is for every believer. So we need to be open. We need to be willing to learn. And uh, these are some things that can be learned, which means, right? So the, that Paul is teaching the church, and he's teaching the believers, the, the church that he planted, right? It's, it's enough proof that these gifts can be 
learn. They are supernaturally or spiritually imparted, but we can learn. Right? We can learn about these gifts. Gifts. Okay. If you look at, um, um, you know, Psalm, yeah, Psalm 111 verses one to three. Okay. Psalm 111 says, "Praise the Lord! I will praise the Lord with my whole heart." in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. Okay, So the works of the Lord, the supernatural works of the Lord, studied, which means I'm seeking, I'm searching, I'm inquiring, I'm learning, right? studied by the Lord, by, the, by all who have great pleasure in them. OK? OK. Next, we move to the ministry of Jesus. Okay, what do we see in the ministry of the Lord Jesus? In what way did he minister? Okay. Um, we can look at Luke chapter 4. It is there in the notes. Luke, Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Okay. What, does, uh, what does the Bible say? It says that Jesus returned. This is after his fast in the wilderness. right? Jesus returned in the power of the spirit okay does it say there right jesus returned in the power of the spirit to galilee and news of him went throughout all the regions all the surrounding regions through all the surrounding regions okay so this is what is it? when jesus returned he returned in the power of the spirit and why did news of him spread because the power of the spirit was manifest or was visible in his ministry the way he served the way, whatever he taught, whatever he did, the power of the spirit was manifest. Okay? So that is why news of him would sp spread all throughout all the regions because the power of the spirit was manifest. Okay? In other words, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Okay? Acts chapter 10, verse 38, again there in the notes, says how uh, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Okay? Jesus, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Okay. So he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was anointed and with power, who went about healing, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So this is how this is what he did. This is how the power of the Holy Spirit was manifest in the ministry of Jesus. It was a supernatural ministry, okay, where the power of the Holy Spirit was manifest. Okay, then we look at Hebrews chapter 2. Okay, Hebrews chapter 2, again talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, we right before starting the class, we looked at verse 1. Okay, let's look at verses 3 and 4. It says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. So he's talking about the good news of salvation. Okay. We should not neglect it. Okay. How can we escape if we neglect? Verse 4, God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit. So what happened? The Lord Jesus brought the good news. He went about ministering in the power of the Spirit, it says here that God bore witness. He confirmed something. He said, yes, this is true. He bore witness to the message, to the ministry of Jesus, with what? With signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the gifts of the Holy Spirit testify witness to the words of the Lord Jesus and were a part of the ministry of the Lord Jesus. Okay, So we see this, that the Lord Jesus himself ministered in the power of the Spirit over and over again. So it was not a ministry that was devoid of power. It was a ministry of power, supernatural ministry, but it was the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, It was the anointing of the Holy Spirit which caused the ministry to be what we see and read okay well that was the ministry of the lord what did the lord tell the disciples we read in the baptism of the holy spirit he said but you will receive power when the holy spirit 
comes upon you. So he told the disciples, you wait in Jerusalem. You will receive power. Which means the Lord was saying, hey, you will receive the same thing that I received in order to do the ministry. You will receive the same thing. And it's not something different. Same thing. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be witnesses. Right? Okay, let's look at a few verses here. Um, John chapter 7, verses um, 37 to 39. Okay, John 7, verse 37 to 39. We're just taking some time to look at these verses to just establish that this is the work, this is the work and ministry of the Lord Jesus. And it was by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? John 7, 37 to 39. Okay. It says, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So he's saying, you know, this would happen to each and every person who believes. Right? So this... this work of the Holy Spirit, this river flowing out of the heart of the believer is for every person who believes in Jesus. Okay? Okay. Another verse that we see, John chapter 14. Okay, John chapter 14 and verse 12. This is another amazing verse, right? Because Jesus says to the disciples, most assuredly, I say to you. Okay, most, most assuredly meaning, surely I'm telling you. No, this, is, this is true. If you have any doubts, don't, don't have any doubts. Most assuredly, I'm telling you, I'm telling you with utmost confidence, saying, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Okay? Acts chapter 10, 38, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, right? And destroying the works of the enemy. He went about healing and and doing good. Now, he, the Lord Jesus is teaching and he's saying, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works he will do, because I go to my Father. And then he says, and, and talk. we read the verses following that, you see that he's referring to the Holy Spirit. Verse 15, uh, verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Right? So he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's saying, the works that I do, he will do also because I go to my Father. And there's a key in that. What is happening when he goes to the Father? He's sending the Holy Spirit to be with us forever. He says, I will not leave you orphans. You know, that the Holy Spirit will come. He's the helper. He will teach. He will remind and do all those things. And the primary thing is he will cause you to be like me. Okay, when we say Christ likeness, we talk, we think immediately about the character of Jesus, which is right, right? How he was loving, how he was forgiving, how he was compassionate, how he was patient, and all that. Right? We think about the character, how he was holy, how he lived a sinless life. We think about the character when we think of the word Christ likeness, just like Jesus. There's another aspect to it, right? Another part of it is like, just like how a coin has two sides, the other side of it is that he ministered in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the other side of the coin, okay? When we say Christ-like, it means that also, right? That he, God confirmed the preaching of the word with signs, wonders, and miracles, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So signs, wonders, miracles, the power of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for every believer. And the Lord is saying, the works that I do, he will do also. You know, he worked, he walked in the gifts of the Spirit, healing, miracles, and so on, prophecy, and so on. So he's saying, this is for every believer. The gifts of the Spirit are for every believer. He who believes in me okay so we need to understand that so we need to make that you know that check in our heart do i believe that the gifts of the spirit are for me okay do i believe that the the ministry of jesus the way he ministered is for me also as a disciple right 
because if I'm believing in him, if I believe in his words, these are the words of the Lord. He's saying, if you believe in me, then you will do the works that I do. Why? It's not because of your natural ability, because it's because of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we need to make that check. We need to make that change. Okay. So uh, the question here, Gertrude, can we get all the nine gifts of the Spirit? Well, Scripture points to the fact that yes, it is. Right? And uh, we're going to look at some of those. Uh, this, um, as, we, as we proceed, we will see how and why all the gifts are for the believer. Because it is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has these gifts. The Holy Spirit is in us, and He wants to manifest or, you know, uh, or show forth Himself when there is a need. Show forth Himself when there is a, you know, and when there's a requirement. When, show forth Himself when there is a sickness. So the gifts of the Spirit are part and parcel of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is in us, and He manifests Himself. Okay, so we will we will again talk about the ministry gift. The ministry office and so on. Okay, so the simple answer is yes. Okay, okay. So the early church walked in it. Okay, the early church. If you look at all the early disciple, uh, the early church, the disciples, they walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, if you if you recall, we went through the Book of Acts, right? Wherever the Holy Spirit was mentioned, and we we saw the amazing things that the Holy Spirit did through these ordinary disciples, ordinary men and women. Okay, right from the beginning we went through wherever the Holy Spirit of men was mentioned in the book of Acts. Maybe you can go through again and see how the Holy Spirit ministered, how the Holy Spirit did those works of power through ordinary people. Okay, so the, uh, the early church walked in it. The early church thought about it, right? We see in Corinthians, Paul preaching, teaching about the works of the Holy Spirit. The early church also ministered. Peter and James were sent to Samaria. Why? Because they had heard that this place has received the gospel. So go and pray for them to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul, when he's just meeting in Acts chapter 8, 19, I think we saw, he meeting his disciples, the disciples at Ephesus for the first time, what was his first question? Hey, how are you doing? How's the weather? Did you have, you know, did you have, you know, your coffee? Did you have your, no, no. His first question is, hey, did you the, receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Very strange. Which means that it was a natural thing, you know, a usual, ordinary thing in the early church to have that conversation about the Holy Spirit with the believer, right? And to ask that question, hey, you need to be taught. You need to be prayed over. You need to be ministered to. Or you need to open up your life and receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Because it's for you. It's for every believer. Okay. So the early church taught it. The early church walked in it as well. Okay. So, uh, so which means that it is for us. This supernatural ministry is for each one of us. You know, we read about in Stephen and all the other believers. So the, the supernatural work of God. The ministry is for each and every one of us today. Okay, um, you can actually go through some of these uh, things in page page number um, nine, I think. Right, you can go through that. How we've se we've seen the scripture, uh, but you can go through that again. Right, just from this perspective of how it is for every believer. Now, you no, know, there could be some questions. Okay, now there could be some questions and perfectly normal questions. Right. This supernatural ministry, this power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we encounter this verse in 1 Corinthians 13. Okay, it says that, um, you know, we know in part 1 Corinthians 13, verse 9. Okay, um, I think it's in page 10 or page 11 in your notes. Um, I mean, in your book, right? When that which is perfect has come. So Paul talks about that which is perfect has come, that which is you know, in part is done away with. So let's just try and understand because sometimes people say, okay, that which is perfect has come. It's referring to the word of God. So that which is in part, which means all this prophecy and all these gifts and everything, they have stopped. The word of God has come. 
therefore these gifts this work of the holy spirit this you know in in terms of these gifts and everything that is done away with meaning there's no more need for it okay let's read through um that uh, scripture or uh, maybe we'll uh, yeah we'll take a break and then we'll uh, look at some of these objections or reasons for uh not actually manifesting or not not actually pursuing the supernatural uh with respect to the holy spirit we'll take a break